Hello everyone. I'm at the Laurel Angles Wilder Museum. I just happened to stumble on this. We're gonna go inside and check it out. So come on in and let's see what they have. So we are one of two sites in the nation that talks primarily about the wilders as opposed to the eagles. Um, so the other location that puts an emphasis on the wilders would be in Malone, New York. Okay. Here we have a picture of the wilder family featured in the second book of the Little House series, Farmer Boy, A Year in the Life of Almanzo, Laura Ingalls Wilder's future husband. Here we have parents, James and Angeline. There we have Royal. There's Almanzo, Laura's husband, at about the age of 12, so they weren't married yet. We have Laura Ann, Eliza Jane, Alice, and baby brother Pearly Day. Now, even if you are super familiar with the book series, some of these names probably won't sound familiar to you. And that's because two of the siblings that were mentioned in the books, or actually were unmentioned in the books, are pictured here. We have Laura Ann and Pearly Day. Laura Ann was the eldest. She had already moved out of Home. She also shared the same name as the author Laura, so the author Laura thought it would be misleading to have two separate Lauras in the same book series, especially for younger readers. So that's why she goes unmentioned. Yeah. Then we have Pearly Day, clearly the baby of the family. He wasn't born until approximately two years after that time period that's featured in the book Parker Boy actually takes place. So the simple answer as to why he was left unmentioned is he wasn't even a thought in anybody's head yet. Here we have James and Angeline Wilder, Almanzo's parents, Laura's in-laws, on their 50th wedding anniversary on their property. Now that was a big deal back then, when you really think about it, to have a 50th wedding anniversary, let alone live to see 50, was a huge cause for celebration. Over 150 people showed up on their property to help celebrate and honor their couple during this tremendous feat. And here down below, we have two pictures of structures on the Wilder family farm. We have Wilder home taken in 1890. This picture was taken in 1890. If you look closely, you can see people out front. We have Almanzo standing up, parents James and Angeline sitting down next to him. Eliza Jane, daughter Rose, wife and author Laura Ingalls Wilder, and distant family relative off to the side. Now the reason Almanzo and Laura and their young daughter were like included in this picture is because they were staying here in this home for about a year and a half and attending church in this church building while recovering from some nasty events that happened to them when they were living in Dakota Territory, which is now DeSmith, South Dakota. To name a few tragic incidents the young family encountered within the first four years of their marriage, you would have um, a baby boy that passed away three weeks after he was born. Their house burned down, their crops failed, they were in a lot of debt. And the final nail in the coffin of their chapter there in Dakota Territory would be that Almanzo and Laura, and then Almanzo's older brother Royal, all came down with nasty cases of diphtheria, which is a very deadly respiratory disease that almost had a 50-50 survival rate at that time period. And Almanzo had a lot of health complications from that bout of diphtheria, and he was very weak and frail during that time period. So his family convinced them to give up their claim in Dakota Territory and come here to Spring Valley to rest and convalesce. And that's exactly what they did for about a year and a half. Unfortunately, the home that they stayed in, which was very grand and basically a mansion to compare to anything Laura would have lived in growing up, is no longer standing. It was torn down in 1926 for unknown reasons, but the horse barn on the Wilder farm is still around. If you wanted to go out and see it, you certainly could drive by and take all the pictures that you want, but it's on privately owned property. So we would just ask, don't go on the land itself, but it is there for your viewing from the well, Where's that at? Um, it's right outside of town we have maps here at the museum where you guys can come and pick okay. them up for a specific direction okay and then over here these two pictures were both taken here in spring valley we have the wilder brothers curly royal and almanzo just when they were a little bit older and more grown up and then we have a young rose wilder at about the age of three now she was a very stubborn but intelligent young girl and she was very proud of her newly acquired ring. You might see it on that finger right over there. So she wants to show off this newly acquired ring in the picture. The photographer thought it was immodest or vain for a young girl to be wearing jewelry in a picture. So he asked her, hey, take it off. She refuses him. They bicker back and forth about it for a while until eventually the photographer gets tired of arguing with the toddler 
and says, okay, we're going to change plans. He says, you can leave that ring on, but we are going to change the hand that's featured in the picture. He places her naked hand on top of that ringed finger, thinking they'll both be satisfied with that result. She agrees to his new plan. He goes behind the camera to take the picture, and at the last second, she switches her hands on him to get that ring in the picture, and you can tell by the smug look on her face, she is quite proud that she won. And I'm sure you've heard of Nellie Olson. She's the notorious mean girl in the book series. So Nellie Olson was actually from an area not too far from Spring Valley, Minnesota, before she moved to Walnut Grove and encounters the Ingalls for the first time. She was born in between Leroy, Minnesota and Lime Springs, Iowa. But her name was not actually Nellie Olson, it was Owens. Laura changes the name in the book series to kind of protect the family's privacy because she wasn't recording the best things about them. Even if they were true, they weren't exactly a rave review. But on top of that artistic liberty that Laura takes with the subtle name change is the fact that the fictional character Nellie is a composite of three different mean girls throughout Laura's life. Nellie Owens, pictured here, is the very first one she ever encounters in Walnut Grove. Then later on, there would be Genevieve Masters and Stella Gilbert. So just keep that in mind. Maybe this Nellie grew up to be a perfectly pleasant young lady, but we'll never know. She takes the bad rap for it, and she'll go down the history as being the mean girl. And lastly, we have our 1875 Fulmar County Census. Highlighted in yellow, we have two claims to fame for the town. The top one being the Wilders with initials for Almanzo and Curly because they were the only children living at home with their parents during that time. And then here we have the Sears family with Richard listed right there in the middle. Is that original or a copy of the original? Um, this is not the original, no, it's, it's a copy. copy. Yes. So the original would look just like that? Minus the yellow highlighter, yes. <laughs> And the paper over top. Um, and so Richard Sears, he did grow up here, attended school here. He was acquainted with Almanzo. They were about the same age. And then later on, he moves away. He encounters Alba Roebuck, and they start the Sears and Roebuck mail order catalog, which later turns into the Sears chain of stores we know of or knew of today. Um, there's more information about Richard Sears downstairs in the basement that you'll be able to take a look at. But first, I will take you guys upstairs into the sanctuary of the church for a little round. And so. I do love history, and like my mom would read the Little House books to me growing up. I was familiar with the TV show. So, over here we have our files and timeline um, and photo display. So, everything is kind of logical because it is a timeline. This top line up here, this periwinkle blue, so this would actually be Wilder Travels. Pink would be Ingalls Travels, and then once it merges into this bright, vibrant purple, that would be Laura and Almanzo's life together and all the happenings after that marriage. Um, and so you're more than welcome to take a look around, view the information as well. And then the church is absolutely gorgeous. It's our pride and joy. And so Hans Anderson, if you're familiar with who that is, he is also the starter of the Anderson Window Company familiar with Anderson windows they're good windows. Yes, Anderson windows yes. <laughs> um, he was the architect as well as the architect of several other buildings here in Spring Valley but this is the only one that's still standing um, so he put an emphasis on spatial awareness and light while designing this church so if you look upwards when you look at the ceiling think upside down Viking ship right it's very domed or arched um, and so <laughs> we're very proud of it these windows in here all but four outdate the church by over 150 years. Their date of origin is 1715, and they were made in Italy in a grisé style. So grisé windows are different from your typical stained glass because the artist or the designer actually took paint and stencils, and that's how he gave the intricate work on the windows and spirals. If you get up closer to the window, maybe on the side of the church, you can feel the raised ridges from the paint work. They don't make you no know, two windows the same, right? Exactly. Yeah. So each these sets are the same-ish, but they will not be 100% accurate to one another because it was all done by hand. Mm -hmm. okay. So there's a lot of room for inaccuracies that way, even if you're skilled in your trade. Um, but each set of these windows are different, like in the church. And then the four windows in here that are not the frise would be the circular rose window up above, and then the three vertical windows at the front of the church. So all of those windows are installed in the 1950s. Also in the 50s, all of the frise windows came out of the church, were sent to Minneapolis to be refurbished, update the paint, and then they were installed back in the church, and a protective glass window was installed in the 
exterior of the church. All of the brick in the exterior of the church um, was made by a local brick factory as well. So it's pretty impressive. <laughs> Um, before you guys head down the stairs, after you get all of your information and like that, don't forget to try and ring the 1200 pound Troy bell. The rope cord is right in the corner. What is that? It's a heavy bell. It's a... You guys can ring it if you like. Or I can bring it for you too. Um, so yeah, 1200 pound bell. This was not original when the Wilders were attending church here. It wasn't installed until later. Um, but there is a nap to it. Pull down as much rope as possible, like hand over hand, and then let go right away, and it should ring for you. Um, so, pull down, go. <laughs> and then Almanzo's father, James, he donated $50 to the building fund of this church when they were moving here to Spring Valley. And $50 may not seem like a lot now, but back then that was equal to over $1,000. So that does point to the Wilder's wealth compared to the Ingalls. A farmer like Charles Ingalls was more likely to have 50 cents, let alone $50. That would be unheard of. So just keep that in mind as well. All right, I'm gonna ring this 1200 pound bell. Kata told me, or showed me how to do it, so I'll give it a try. Yeah. Um, because a lot of people may think that those characters are just characters, but she actually used her real name, Laurel Engel, wow. in the book and the um, series. Yes, yep. yes. So her real name was Laurel Engel's Wilder. The Wilder part didn't come until obviously she married a Wilder, but that was her real name. Other things in the book had been changed for privacy reasons. So we always say the book is a work of historic fiction based off of real people and events. So just keep that in mind as well. Due to timelines and the smoothness and the fluidity of the storyline, um, certain things change, dates, times, ages, places, names, but that was her real name in life as well, so. Yeah, down here it is mainly Spring Valley history from that same Wilder era and on. Points of interest include our Native American display case that's on loan to us. Um, and with Miss Chester drawers, we have a good fossil collection as well. We have our 1874 Book and Ladder Fireway, the original leather bucket brigade system. This was in use at the time the Wilders were living here in Spring Valley. There's also a case of information about Richard Sears, the co founder of Sears and Roebuck. This is the bucket brigade system. <laughs> You would stand in one big line, you'd pass these buckets full of water, person to person, down the line. The last person in line would empty that water onto the fire. Now, as you can imagine, this was not a very effective method at putting out a fire. So more often than not, this was used to keep the fire contained more than anything. And then we have two separate rooms on the back wall. One is a replica old time kitchen and the other is a replica general store as well. So there's a lot to look at down here. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Anything else you could tell us about Laurel Engel? I, I noticed up here she was 65 years old before she started writing. I didn't know that. Yes, yep. So, I mean, she really is a good example of you're never too old to start <laughs> a career change, right? Um, and so Rose, her adult daughter, she was really the one that started to push her mother into writing the books. And so she was 65 when she finally started to pen the first few drafts of what her biography would be called, and that was Pioneer Girl. It was one giant book based off of her recollections and her memories from growing up in a covered wagon, basically. Um, hmm. Publishers and editors really weren't into that idea. There were a lot of other pieces of work out there that had that similar feeling and vibe, and they didn't think this just this giant memoir would do well on the market and so they convinced her to start writing a books or a book for kids and that would have been the very first book in the series um, about her growing up in Pepin Wisconsin but her fans demanded more they didn't want it to be just a standalone so then she writes the second book in the series farmer boy a year in the life of her future husband Almanzo but then her fans still wanted more, so then she continued on with her life story and the rest of the book.
she was 85 photographing. Laura, 1930. Almanzo, 1890. Laura, 1890. And this is the little girl that didn't want to take her ring off when she took the photo. Nineteen hundred. Laura and Almanzo, nineteen thirty five. Farmer Boy's Home. Okay, everyone, I hope you liked this tour. This is very interesting. We got to see some of Laurel Engel's actual place where she went to church, uh, some of the things that she used, and it's an amazing place. I hope you stop here. I will put the address down below, and please subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications. If you have any questions, please ask, and I will talk to you later.